Hey guys, what is up? Nav coming at you again with another deck profile of a very old leader that came out a long time ago when Wish Leaders um, became, you know, the popularity during its era and it's Super 17. So this is a really cool deck. Um, the leader is really unique. I really like this leader a lot and I'm actually playing the Super 17 engine. So I want to show you guys how this deck works. And just to give you a little heads up, to be honest, this is not the most competitive deck. This is a fun deck, a uh, pretty cool deck to experiment and have fun with. Take this to your locals, play this, you know, play this against your friends in exhibition matches. This isn't a deck that it's like, well, I got to bring this to, you know, the next big event or anything. Unless you can and you, you have the skills. Um, the deck is kind of expensive a little bit, but it's still fun. It's still strong and it, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty decent build. So basically what we have here is the Super 17 has an auto where you burst two, send in the top two cards of your deck to the drop area to draw a card. And then the regular Awaken, if you have four or less life, you can untap two of your energy and flip them over. And then he has, so now we have Super 17. When he's Awaken, he has an auto if, for Sparking 5. When he attacks, you draw a card and gain critical. And he also has an active main that says if your opponent has 10 or more cards in their hand, they have to discard they have to discard cards in their hand until they have nine. And in the meta that we're kind of in right now, people have a really large hand. They'll have like 10 to 15 cards in hand. And with some combos that I'll show you with this deck, with the Super 17 engine, you will put them from nine cards to two, three, four, to about four cards in hand, just not even by comboing anything at all and making your opponent waste resources. So let's get over the deck. We'll start off with the unisons. So what I play is three Metal Cooler Terrifying Horde and four Demigra Unison of Sorcery. So these are your basic unisons you want to play. Uh, to be honest, if I had a fourth Metal Cooler, I'd play it. And uh, you know what? I might as well put this here too. So we're also going to play, just put this up here like this, four Frieza Charismatic Villain. You know, this is for total board, board control. So... On your turn one, you're going to want to do your Demigo Unison of Sorcery so then that you have your Frieza Charismatic Villain in play. Uh, if you don't know what this card does, you know, for the un for the Demigo Unison, it's a one drop green, plus one, gain, gain 10k for the turn, you know, so he's a 15k every turn. He has a permanent that if uh, you would lose a marker from this card from an attack, you actually can just take life. So this is going to help you self-awaken too with this leader. But just to let you know, this is not a leader that you're trying to wake up with immediately. You want to take advantage of the burst. You want to send cards into the drop area. You want to fill your drop as fast as possible so that you can make some really cool plays from the drop area. And I'll show you more of that soon, too. So with this guy, you're going to, with the Demigra, you're just going to start setting board control. Uh, with the minus three, you're going to KO one of your opponent's battle cards. And then you choose, after you KO that card, then you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards uh, with energy cost of three or less, ignoring barrier and KO it. So it gets rid of two cards, and then with Frieza, that would be three. So what you really want to do, though, is on your turn three, you're going to want to play your Metal Cooler Terrifying Horde. This card will give you immense, massive draw power, board control, and a lot of pressure. And you have combo power every turn. So what this cooler does is he has an active main that if your leader is green, you get to play a token, a metal cooler token. It has 15k power and has 5k combo and it doesn't cost anything to do. So every turn you have a free combo or a free attacker on board. You're going to start creating pressure. For the plus one, you're going to discard a card from your hand and draw two. For the minus four, uh, you're going to play three metal cooler tokens. Um, you're just going to play three more. So on your turns, you just keep a massively making this large giant board. You can just do the minus four and bring three out. And if you didn't do the active main on that same turn you did, you're bringing out four tokens. So this is really, really, really powerful, really good. Definitely go over this. So we got that out of the way. Uh, for the secret rare, I play one grade eight, you know, the, the primal carnage. This card's amazing. Uh, you never really do the active main. I mean, you can for it to gain the dual attack triple strike into the 40k but honestly you really just want to do the auto to get rid of any card that is a nuisance to you that is a problem if your opponent 
you know, uh, uses a card and push very hard for it for game, you're gonna just play this, you're gonna combo with it, remove it from the game, and you're gonna KO that card ignoring barrier. There's no restriction to it. Now for some of my one drops, I do play one Black Power Mass Sane. It's just for, uh, you know, self-explanatory, honestly. Mass Black Power Mass Sane in this meta is amazing. This card is gonna make the opponent discard two cards if they're playing cards without you, if they're playing cards through skills, that's a non-keyword skill. So this hits a lot of decks. This hits a lot of decks. And you also are going to play for Dodoria, the Cold-Blooded, just for double strike. How if you self-awaken, if you just need to get that one life. Uh, but these are not cards. These guys right here are not cards that you're trying to depend on. That's not your really main win con. You can use them at the end after you make your opponent's hand weak, but... You know, this is pretty cool. One drops, double strikes. I'm not really worried about crit because my leader is going to put their hand to nine. And then with super 17, they're, they're going to lose a lot. So here is the chain. So I want to go get through this first. We're going to play four super 17 further heights. You're going to play also three infernity, uh, not inferno, uh, infernal villainy cell. And you're going to also play two super 17 cell exorb so i'll explain there is a three drop that you can play there's a three drop android 17 who is who has deflect and what he does is you put what is it that you put i think you put like a um i think you either put a cell card or an android 17 yeah, that's what it is. You put an Android 17 under him, and then you're able to go into the Super 17 Furthering Heights. So here's the reason why I don't do that. There are cards in my deck that is going to bring this guy out on turn four, okay? You're going to have Zerline in the deck who's going to bring this card out for free. It doesn't cost anything at all, and he's going to just be a barrier deflect. And then when it's time to turn him on for four energy... You're going to then put the cell from your drop area under this card, and you're going to go into the Super 17 Cell Exorb. The thing about it is you can play it either from the deck or from the drop area. So if it's in your hand, it's a waste. That's why we play the Metal Cooler, so you're able to dump it out. That's why you're playing this leader, so you're going to send the top two cards from the deck to the drop area and draw a card. And also, the Super 17 Furthering Heights has an auto that when he does get played, you can KO one of your opponent's battle cards. Um, it can't get over barrier, but it's okay. The reason why I chose this cell, by the way, is that early game, if they're trying to attack you or try to do any damage to you, you can use this as a pseudo combo. Now it's in the drop area, you drew a card. So it's a pretty simple cell. I don't play any other cells. The only reason why I only play two Super 17 cell absorbed is because if they're in the drop area, they're free to play. This isn't one that you want to max out. Back in the day, some players try to max it out, but you do not need to max it out. So this guy is really, really amazing. So he has critical, dual attack, and deflect. And he has an auto, Sparking 10, which is not hard to get in this deck since you're going to be sending so many cards from the deck to the drop area and from your hand to the drop area for the draw power from the cooler that when he attacks, the opponent must discard two cards from their hand and send it to the drop area. So think of the combo like this. You awaken with your leader on this turn, right? You have this combo out. You're gonna do the active main. The opponent goes down to nine cards in hand. You're going to attack with super 17. They did, that's pitching two cards before any counters. They go to seven cards in hand. If they counter, they're gonna go to six cards in hand. You say no combo. If they pitch two cards, two 5Ks, now they're down the five cards in hand. You attack again. And then they're going to go from five, they're going to go to three cards in hand. You can either combo or not combo. If they take the hit, they're going to be down to three cards in hand. Your leader's going to attack, put their cards to two cards, to put their hand to two cards in their hand left. And then you go for your Dodoria and go for the double strike and go all out. So this card is really amazing. It can get really a lot of pressure done. It's a really cool combo. I really love it. And I'm also going to show you, too, what other cards I play that can make this a bit unique. Um, on top of that, by the way, this card is going to be used as a successor piece for our friend right here. This is Lord Slug Youth Regain. He came out from Draftbox 6 
the giant force this card is amazing no one has played it right now i do understand successor is not the most popular thing going on he's a six drop 25k double strike and he's successor for one green energy your whole deck is greened out the turn that you do the whole awakening and the whole you know going into your super 17 after attacking with everything you know making the mail cards and discard cards from their hand you're going to pay one green energy, send your Super 17 to the drop area, and play this guy. He has a permanent that says that this card will be removed from the battle area. It's sent to the warp instead. The only reason why they do that is so that you don't continue to do a successor chain. Because successor, they have to go to the drop area. If They, they cannot go to the warp and for you to do successor. So that's why they did this. So uh, you don't abuse this. So he has an auto. For a bond three, if your leader card is green, you get the option when he attacks. You can either choose one card in your uh, opponent's hand and discard it, or you can KO one of their battle cards in rest mode. You're really going to do the discarding. So like I said, he's the super 17 is going to make them discard four. So they go from nine to four. Your leader is going to make them crit alive. And if they're comboing cards, they're going to be less than... They're going to have less than four to five cards in hand. And then that's when you go for the double strike and drop everything. Now, the Bond 3, I know you might think that's a little bit problematic, but it's not. Your Cooler Unison is spamming tokens. So whatever on top of whatever you have on board, your, the tokens are going to allow this Bond to activate because you have three battle cards technically in play. Cooler also um, Lord Slug also counts for the bond. So that's one right there and two tokens. This is not difficult to pull. This is really, really easy to do. On top of over there, the green cards, I play two Tapion, Fate of the Hero. Um, he's just a pretty cool green uh, blocker that draws, so you want to filter out the deck. You just do the active main, send him to the drop area, draw a card, and at the end of your turn, he comes out. You have a 15k blocker on board. So pretty cool. What I do play is one rebrand, Avatar of Affection. I do wish I had about two or three, but I don't. This card is amazing. She's a triple striker, five drop. If your leader card's green and this card is in rest mode, your opponent cannot attack, can only attack this card. All of their cards must go there and they have to waste resources to get rid of this 30K uh, beat stick. So basically when she comes out, when she's played from the hand, uh, when you play this card from your hand, you choose all of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring Barry, and KO them. So this is a board wipe. So if you're up against a deck that's really spamming board, but really putting a lot of pressure on your turn five, just slam this baby out, get rid of the whole board, attack, and they're going to have to waste resources. She also has an auto that when she's removed from the battle area by an opponent skilled or KO, you're able to play a green battle card with an energy cost of four of less in your drop area so this allows you to play the super 17 he comes out now you're ready for the next turn so on your next turn you charge you're gonna have uh six energy you spend four you do the whole chain so this is gonna allow you to make some really cool moves what i also play is five i mean i'm sorry four uh zerlion maiden supporter this card is amazing. There's going to be a way, there's going to be a card that cheats this guy out, cheats out a lot of cards in this deck. So basically, um, 30k as well, five drop. When this card is played, you get to choose one green card with an energy cost of four less and play it from your hand. This is going to allow you, I'm just going to slam this right here too. This allows you to play the maiden, what's this guy's name? I don't even know this guy's name. Rabat, Ra, Rabanra? I guess it's Rabana or Rabana, whatever. This guy is a really amazing too. It allows you to play this card. It allows you to play your Super 17 from your hand. So you, you have many ways to bring out all of these cards. And the Super 17 has Deflect, so you can't do anything. Um, so basically, it would play one of these cards on board or the Super 17. When it does, when this card gets played, your opponent discards two cards from their hand. So that is immense pressure. They're just discarding two cards. You have two cards on board. And uh, let me continue, though, with the effects of the Zerline, because I'm all over the place right now. So this card has an effect that when the um, he, you have an auto that you KO this card, and then when your opponent, um, when one of your opponent's cards attacks, they can't attack with battle cards for the rest of the turn so this is kind of like your dormant potential this is kind of like a nimbus effect so you're going to ko this card after attacking it on your opponent's turn you're going to ko it 
Now they can't attack with any more battle cards for the turn. So all they have is unisons and all they have is their leader. And if they swarm with the leader, then all they really have left is just unison cards. Um, you're going to do that and they can't swing no more. And then he has a final auto that says when this card is removed from the battle area by opponent's skill or KO'd, you get to play a four drop or less battle card from your drop area. Like I said, there's so many ways to cheat out Super 17. And this applies to the same for this guy, but his is for an energy cost of three or less. Um, you don't have really too many targets for that. You do have the Tapion. You do have your Dodorias. Um, you know, you, you do have something like that. You also have your Super Combos that I'm going to show you guys soon. So this is a pretty, pretty cool uh, ability to use, the spam as well. And then for some Negates... Battle card negates. Uh, you're going to play uh, three Kakuncha, uh, Beastly Maiden. Basically, just a counterattack, negating the attack, and when it comes into play, it KOs one of your opponent's battle cards. And that effect doesn't, ha doesn't have to happen if you counter. If you play this card as well, you know, cheating it out with their Lion, you can KO a battle card. And it has a permanent that if your leader's green on your opponent's turn, it, this card is basically a, a two cost. So, pretty cool. Pretty fun. Pretty cool. I like it. So we play four super combos of uh, Great Save Man, um, Vanguisher Villainy. You know what this one does. If all your energy is green, you have four or less life, put a card under the deck, draw two, you gain 10K. So this can uh, help you filter out your hand and get cards which you need. You can also put Super 17 back under the deck. So then when you do your Super 17 effect to bring out the six drop, you can do it and play it from the drop area because if they're in your hand, they are a waste. We also play four Master Roshis. Uh, this guy's real easy, you know, real simple. You pay a green energy for an active main, send them to the warp, choose one of your green extra cards and add it to your hand from your drop area. So these are the extra cards I play. So this right here, you're gonna play four to save a hopeful future. This card is super amazing for this deck. Basically has an active main, choose up to one of your green battle cards with an energy cost of five or less. And from your drop area and play it. So you can play your Zer Lion, you can play the Rebrands. The Rebrands is not gonna be able to KO everything, but it does still get all of its other abilities. You're gonna play your Super 17s if you need it. So this is a pretty cool card. I really love this card, and it's very recyclable with the Roshis. And then uh, for some combo cards, you're gonna play two Cells Earth Power, Earth Destroying Kamehameha. You already know what this card does. If your leader's green, all your energy's green. For an active battle, you pay an energy and you basically give one of your cards 15k. Uh, a battle card or a leader card gains 15k power for that battle and you discard a card from their hand. You choose. So this is pretty cool. And then for my negates, we play four sharking death balls and two pretty black holes. Like I said, I don't have dormant potentials. If I had dormant potentials, it would be in this deck. But if you also notice, your Zerline is going to stop a lot of attacks for that turn. You have blockers on the deck. You have pretty much a lot of ways to keep the board in control, to stop attacks, to negate attacks, and to make the opponent focus their attacks not on your leader, but on the board that you're trying to make. So Shocking Death Ball, easy, you know, Sparking 5. You can take a life, KO a battle card, you know, negate an attack, KO a battle card when energy costs a two or less. There's a lot of cards in this game that's like that right now. And Pretty Black Hole is really cool. I might, put it, I might put it down to one and just use Roshi to bring it back. So basically what Pretty Black Hole does is that it negates an attack. And then you can choose one of your battle cards, negated skills, send it to the drop area. And if you do, you draw a card. And then you get to choose any number of your, of your opponent's battle cards that are not tokens. Um, with an energy cost equal to or less than the card that you sent to the drop area and KO them. So you're able to do board wipe. What you want to do with this is you're going to want to do it with your Frieza Charismatic Villains to KO, you know, send that to the drop area, draw a card, KO anything with an energy cost of five or less that equals up to it. And just keep the board state in control. So it's a pretty cool card. So I'm going to record some games of this deck, but I really guys hope that you like this. I really hope that you try it out, give your opinion about it. Is it whack? Is it dope? Is it cool? Would I play it? Would I not play it? You know, get your life together, man. So I really hope you guys enjoy this deck profile and have a nice day.